All right, welcome everyone. Again, my name is Lisa Pellrine, Director of Enrollment Management here at CHCH, and welcome to our live webinar with our student panelists. Um, last week, we kicked off our webinar series with the academic um, academics at CHCH, and if you go to the webinar page where you signed up for this, there's a live recording of um, last week's webinar. So just a reminder, these webinars are going to be recorded. And any questions that you have, obviously you can um, put in the chat session, um, just like we did in practice when we got started. So that way I can keep track of all your questions and then we'll get to that at the end. Um, oh, we have an appearance right now from a special guest. Let's see. Oh, hold on one second, we have someone joining us. Oh, it's Chargy. Hey Chargy, our school mascot's here. Can hey Chargy. <laughs> hey Chargy. Thanks Thank for joining Chargy. I'm sure you miss all the students, but thanks for joining us today. All right, we'll catch you at the end of the webinar, okay? Bye Chargy, we'll see you soon. <laughs> all right, great. Cool, that's our mascot, so you'll be seeing lots of Chargy. Uh, so right now I'm gonna just share my screen and walk you through this afternoon's schedule so we can have a sense of what we'll be covering this afternoon. All right. So I just shared my screen, hopefully you can all see that. Um, so after my welcome and overview, we're, um, our head of school did join us for the academic webinar last week, um, but we do have a recorded message for him that we'll start off with. And then we have uh, several panelists, uh, students in all different grades, day and boarding, they're, they're gonna have a moment to introduce themselves and tell you a little bit more about themselves and where they come from. And then we're gonna have another video, Rewrite Your Story at CHCH was a campaign that we did last spring. And so we wanna just kind of show you an example of that. Uh, actually, Sydney's gonna be joining us on our, our panel this afternoon. And this Rewrite Your Story is about Sydney wanting to make real connections at, at a boarding school. So it's a really, really great piece. And then after that, we're gonna turn it over to all of you for the Q&A. So like I said, we're gonna be using the chat option on the zoom again on the bottom of your screen is a little white box that says chat and so i will uh be taking you know a list of all your questions and then um, i'll be having our panelists take turns to answer each question not everybody's going to answer every single question uh, but we have lots of great um, students joining us that will be able to share their experiences here at chch all right is everybody ready all right, thanks again for joining us and I'm gonna turn it over to Matt to um, have our welcome from our head of school through video. As the head of school, I want you to know one very important thing. While these times will temporarily change what we do, they will not change who we are. We are still dedicated, we are still inspiring, we are still caring, and yes, we are still chargers. As you watch this, CHH faculty, staff, administrators are all connecting, planning, innovating, sometimes goofing around. But we are certainly focused on one common goal, and that's turning this uncertain time into the most valuable opportunity possible for all CHCH students. There's much we don't know about the near future, but one thing we do know is that learning, support, and community will continue at CHCH. The first step is ensuring that all of our students can take this journey with us. To move forward as a school and community, we must move forward together. We've confirmed that everyone has the technology and access they need to connect, engage, and succeed. CHCH's strong foundation has been built on some core elements and these will continue to drive us no matter where our community is located. Our teachers have always taught lessons that are experiential, collaborative, and inspirational. As we move online, their passion, expertise, and ingenuity will continue to create lessons that inspire and engage. I've seen some of the ideas our teachers are bringing to their curriculum, and I'm excited for the classes to begin. CHCH will also continue to be the place where students are given every opportunity to unlock their passions within. Our faculty have already come up with several ingenious community service opportunities that students can take part in at home. And we hope students will work to continue the phenomenal work generated through our student-led clubs. The relationships and trust between CHH teachers and students have always been crucial. And they matter now more than ever. 
students will continue to connect with their teachers in class and other times reserved for questions and support. Our school counselors, SAS teachers, college counselor, and other support service folks will continue to be available virtually for all our students. Finally, the CHH community is known to be nothing if not caring and empathic. We will continue to support one another as we understand that this is new and challenging for everybody. We are in this together, Chargers. I am hopeful and also confident that we will emerge from this time stronger. And I really look forward to seeing you back on campus as soon as possibly allowed. Take care of yourselves. Great, thank you, Matt. So today is our first day of kicking off um, distance learning. So we just wanted to share that with you. And we did talk a little bit more about what that's gonna look like uh, on our academic um, session that we had last week. I'm just gonna share my screen one more time with you. I just wanna show everybody uh, the page of our virtual revisit days on our website and just to know how to access the videos that we recorded previously. So if you scroll down, you can see that the, uh, the live Q&A for academics already happened. So if you click on this button right here, uh, that's gonna show you the recording of last week's webinar. So if you uh, missed that, that's an opportunity for you to, to join in and, and listen to that. And then as we go through all of our upcoming webinars, the student panel, skills and academic support later on this week on Wednesday, the CHCH parent panel at the end of the week, and then next week turning to a few last ones with visual and performing arts, college counseling, and then athletics at CHCH. So all the recordings will be there for you. So I just wanted to make note of that before we get started. And we'll also send links and other documents to you as well uh, via email. Okay, so just added, I added a link to that in the chat for everybody too. So if anybody wants to see that themselves, they can see the past ones and register for, for upcoming ones. Too. For upcoming ones, great. Thank you, Matt. Good. All right, so I'm gonna take a few minutes to have each of our panelists introduce themselves and they're gonna just give you some basic information and then kind of, you know, a fun, fun quarantine activity that they've, they've been uh, doing. So I'm gonna start off with Sophia. So you're up first and then Andy, you'll be after that, okay? So Sophia, you're up. Hi guys, I'm Sophia. Um, I'm a junior at Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall. I came from Wayland High School um, my sophomore year. Um, some of the things that I do, I'm a varsity girls soccer captain. I play on the basketball team for the girls and I play on the lacrosse team for the girls. I'm very into sports. And I think my favorite thing I've been doing as my pastime is probably painting. Cool, thanks Sophia, great. All right, Andy, you're next and then following Andy will be Sydney. All right, Andy, you're hey on I'm Andy, I'm a sophomore at CHCH. Um, I'm originally from Hackensack Middle School. Uh, I, I'm co I come from Hackensack, New Jersey. Um, some activities I, I participate in, in is boys basketball, boys soccer, SOCA, student government. And um, my favorite quarantine activity is to watch my favorite TV, TV show, Haikyuu. And Andy, what does uh, SOCA stand for? SOCA stands for Students of Color um, Alliance, and okay. it's pretty much all, um, any, anyone can join SOCA, it's a free club. You don't have to be like a uh, culture to join, just you can join. All right, great. Well, we have someone participating who was born in your town as well, that's cool. All right, great. Um, thanks, Andy. So Sydney's up next. Hi, um, I'm Sydney. Um, I'm in 11th grade. I am a boarder. I'm from San Bernardino, California. Um, I do varsity volleyball, varsity basketball, and varsity softball. And I'm also the co-leader of SOCA. I'm in student gov, and I'm also um, a residential assistant in Harrington Hall. All right, and Harrington Hall is one of our two girls' dormitories, so great. Oh, Aaron is with us. Hi, Aaron. I'm gonna have, um, Aaron, do you wanna go next? So we just are having everyone just introduce themselves, grade, day boarding. Um, oh, yeah. you oh, cool, nice sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, real quick, I just gotta apologize about the sunglasses. My eyes are doing really bad lately, and so I'm wearing these, but 
Uh, besides that, <laughs> hey, uh, I'm Aaron. I'm a day student. I'm on the cross country team, and a fun uh, quarantine activity that I'm doing right now is just playing a lot of video games. And where did you? What school did you come from, Aaron? Before coming to CHC, I went to Westwood before coming to CHC. Westwood Public School. Great. Good. All right. Thank you, Aaron. All right. Up next is Mia. All right. Hi, guys. I'm Mia. I am a, a day student in tenth grade. Um, at Chapel Hill, I do varsity girls soccer, basketball, and lacrosse. And one of the things that I've been doing um, during quarantine is a lot of baking and walking my dog. Yeah. Great. And I'm, I also used to go to the Carroll School. Nice. Good. And uh, what's your dog's name? My dog's name is Jupiter. Jupiter, cute. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. All right, um, who is up next? So then next we have Henry. Hi guys, uh, my name is Henry Levitt. I'm a senior uh, at Chapel Hill. Um, I'm a day student, I live in Brookline. Um, and I, I also went to the Carroll School. Uh, I came as a freshman. Um, and I am a varsity uh, cross country runner. I'm the captain of the team. I'm a varsity lacrosse player. I am also the captain of the team. I'm the leader of the business club at school and I'm also a member of NHS. And one of my favorite uh, quarantine activities has been uh, running with my friends um, at a social distance and uh, playing um, kind of uh, pass with the lacrosse ball in my house. Great, good. And all right, and up next is uh, Dylan. Okay. <laughs> uh, hi guys, I'm Dylan. I'm in 12th grade. Uh, I'm a boarder, or I was boarding at Chapel Hill. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. Um, before I went here, I went to uh, uh, Charles River School, which is like a small um, independent school, um, also a private school. Um, so I think that I do have the schools. Um, I'm in varsity soccer, varsity wrestling, varsity lacrosse. And um, just like Henry, I'm also one of the lacrosse captains. Uh, I'm also involved in student government as well as NHS. Um, and yeah. Great. Thank you, Dylan. All right, before we uh, start with the Q&A, Matt, can you uh, turn it over to the uh, video for the Rewrite Your Story? So in middle school and elementary school, I was always like the class clown. My name's Sydney and I'm from Southern California. I feel like um, the friends that I did have didn't really understand me that much. I was just funny to them and I definitely wanted to make a stronger bond with them. I was in about sixth grade when I decided that I wanted to go to a boarding school and it was mostly because I wanted to experience new things and I wanted to meet new people and experience different cultures. And when I came, it was snowing. So that was a little new for me. I was like, wow, it's gonna be snowing like this in winter. I get to see snow. Just the feeling that I got while I was at the school was what really made me say, hey, I have to come here. Cause a lot of other schools, you're not gonna get that. You're not gonna get the feeling of family that you do here. I did not just come here because the people were nice. I came here so that I would be prepared for the future, so that I would be prepared to do whatever I wanted to do in college and be whatever I wanted to be. And this was an amazing opportunity for me to make that real. So boarding at Chapel of Chauncey Hall has been amazing. The people, like the friends that I have made here, I know how people say like, oh, college is when you're gonna make all your friends. This is probably gonna be lifelong relationships. We're together all the time. I have my own roommate and it's preparing me for college. And I also get to see people in the most real way. And that's very different than what it was in middle school, elementary school. They didn't see me when I went home. They didn't see me when I was sad. They didn't see me when I was feeling different types of emotions. They saw me only at school when I was being funny in class or when I was trying to do my work. So um, being here really helped me make good connections with people and stronger bonds. And I made real friends. Great. 
Thank you, Sydney. Hope that didn't embarrass you. No, you're fine. <laughs> All right, great. Uh, actually, one of our, our attendees um, wanted me to share with you, Sydney, your story made me decide to come visit the school and having Dylan tour us and seeing the responsible and honest young man he is made me decide to apply. Um, what do you feel the one thing you learned from CHCH that made you who you are today? So, so Dylan, or Sydney, yeah, either one of you. I, yeah. I can take the. So Dylan, if you want to start and then we'll have Sydney. Yeah, yeah. Apply as well. um, I think one big thing that I learned from going to Chapel Hill is learning how to be like my own independent person. Um, that's kind of starts off um, with like the boarding life because you really got to wake yourself up. You really got to get to class on time. You really got to do your work um, on your own. Cause again, you're, you're without your family. I mean, like everyone at the school is basically your family, but everything is kind of, you're doing for yourself. Um, and so I really learned how to be independent from that, um, which I think is a really good characteristic to, to carry on because I'm the type of person who doesn't really like to be depending on other people for things and I want to produce things myself. So that's one of the biggest things that I'll definitely carry on from Chapel Hill. Great. Thank you, Dylan. Sydney? Yeah, so um, something that I feel like I gained here at Chapel Hill that I couldn't have gained at more of a public school is building stronger relationships that'll last a long time. Um, being so close with people all the time, especially because a lot of my friends are also boarding students, um, just shows us like how to get comfortable with each other and how to always check up on them and stuff like that. All right, and Sydney, can you just talk a little bit more about the academic gains that you've made here? The academic gains. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so I've always kind of, held my academics really highly. Um, that's mostly because um, I've always kind of really looked up, I wanna be doing like greater things in like a better school. And that's why I decided to go to a private school. So um, I've learned, like Dylan said, to be a little bit more independent and in doing my schoolwork on time and stuff. So um, that's really great. Also, I started taking my first art classes, which I'm very passionate about here at Chapel Hill which really helps me to kind of develop my own art style. Good, great. And, and can you just add to that, how did you get used to being so far away from home? Yeah. So um, it was kind of hard. I wouldn't say it was that hard actually at first. Um, <laughs> I was kind of welcomed as soon as I came in. Um, I, I was a little shy when I first came, but like some of the RAs that were already in Harrington Hall, the lower classmen girls dorm, um, kind of helped me to introduce me to their friends and stuff like that. So um, they forced me to kind of break out of my show right away. So being like surrounded with those types of people and like seeing all the little kids that were living on campus and all the dorm parents who were there, like checking up on me was really helpful for me getting comfortable in the school. Great, thank you. Uh, our next question is uh, about National Honor Society. and What do you do in NHS? Sophia, I believe you were in National Honor Society, is that, no, is anyone on the panel, was anyone on the panel in NHS? Yeah, me and Henry are. Uh, you and Henry? Henry, Henry. Uh, yeah, I can talk about uh, National Honor Society a little bit. Okay. Sorry. Um, so, uh, National Honor Society kind of breaks down into a few different um, groups within the actual National Honor Society. So there's like a, a few different things. So we there's one about um, actual uh, things at school. So the chill and uh, chill and chit chat committees, which um, I actually am a part of. And then there's a more, um, you know, humanities based one. And um, we actually recently created a, a feminist, uh, um, a feminist um, chapter part of our chapter um but so i can speak a little bit about the chill and chit chat um and what we do in there so um chill is an event that happens um once or twice every trimester um and recently um me and dylan actually uh we created a fun game show for uh all the students to come to so we uh, i collected um different questions and uh, about uh, all the different teachers um, and then put it into a fun little um, Jeopardy type of game show. And then we had all the students um, and faculty uh, come down to one of our meeting spaces, um, the Commons. Uh, if you were there for registration, that's where the Commons is. And um, we, we played some games, had some fun times, and uh, students were able to win prizes. Um, but NHS is really about uh, kind of 
being able to, you know, take uh, take that step and, uh, you know, become a leader in the community and really, um, you know, excel in the community and kind of become more. And um, yeah, um, I can answer further questions if you have more specific things, but. Uh, Great. Thank you. Um, this one is about just how did your schedule work with, like if you're a boarding student and you have a roommate and just being able to, you know, share the space, make sure you like have time to like get a shower in or wake up or just get into places on time. So um, within our dorms, we have two girls dormitories and one boys dorm, um, but there are definitely plenty of bathrooms and showers for everybody um, to make sure that you have time for that. And sometimes they have a schedule they might shower at night or in the morning. Um, but I didn't know if one of our boarding students wanted to comment on that, just kind of, you know, being able to get yourselves up and, and such. So. Yeah, it's a little different for like the girls in the boys dorms because the girls have more communal showers and the boys actually share their showers with their roommate and whoever's next to them because they have like Jack and Jill bed, um, bedrooms. But for us, it's something that you kind of have to get used to being in communal showers and just knowing when's like the time that the most people are going to be showering. A lot of people tend to do like sports. So like right after your sports, it's a good thing to just shower right after there. Um, for roommates, um, I like to be a little bit more empathetic to my roommate to know, like, if I were taking a nap, I wouldn't want me, like, barging in, making a lot of noise. So, like, learning how to have a roommate and how to, like, be nice to them and, like, just be a good roommate, being clean and all that type of stuff, um, you just get that over time. And, like, for friends, yeah, it's a little harder. I feel like the um, higher you go for grades because you get, like, more academically challenged, I feel like. Um, the older you get but there's always time for you to hang out there's like lunch there's office hours if you're not going to a specific teacher there's always like after school if you're not doing activities um, especially if you like live with them in the dorm you kind of see them a lot because they're there all the time and so are you mm -hmm. and um one of the questions what time do you usually wake up yeah um <laughs> that always gets started at eight, yeah <laughs> Classes start at eight, so I guess it depends how high maintenance you are and how long it takes you to get ready in the morning. <laughs> Um, and all the beds are bunked and we have student lounges in each of the dormitories with the refrigerator, TVs, uh, microwaves and such, but you can't have those things in your room. And then if you, I think there's video game consoles in the common areas, but those aren't there all the time. But when, when um, there's some free time, that's available as well. Um, and so this is for some day students um, to talk about. Can you talk about student life for as a day student and like how involved are you at the school um, and what things can you participate in? So I don't know if Sophia or Yeah. yeah. Um, so coming from public school my whole life, it was definitely a big switch because at my public school, my whole class was 260 students and I was now coming to a school where the entire school was 180 students. Um, and I feel like within my first week at school, I had already found like my group of people and I'd already like began to feel a sense of the community. Um, I think the student life aspect, um, there's really, I see no divide between the day students and the boarding students. Um, a lot of my friends are actually boarding students. I'd say the majority of them are. And I always find myself coming back on the weekends to like hang out with them. I always stay late for study hall during the week and like, I don't see any split, um, which is really nice. Great, thank you. And Mia, do you wanna talk about that a little bit as a transition from being at the Carroll School, um, a private independent local day school and coming um, to CHCH? Do you wanna talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, so I thought the transition was kind of similar from Carroll to Chapel Hill because like the class sizes and um, like the one-on-one -on -one teacher help. Um, the day can tend to be, I feel like a little longer, when you, especially when you have like after school stuff. Um, but it's all like really worth it because I really enjoy what I do after school, so. Good, good, good. And what do you do after school again? Uh, soccer, basketball, and lacrosse. Yep, okay, great. Um, so this could be for day or boarding students. What's your favorite weekend activity? Cooking with Miss Leonelli. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what's, um, what's something yummy you made? 
Um, I remember last year, me and one of my close friends, we went to her apartment and we like made homemade pasta. Nice. Which was good. Andy, what's your favorite weekend activity? I think one of my favorite weekend activities that me and my friends go to a lot is um, open gym because mm -hmm. we get to fool around, play basketball, and do a lot. Yeah. Wow. For Hi. me, um, it was less of like a weekend activity, but it was also um, dorm bonding. Mm -hmm. So we went to Launch recently, which is like a trampoline park, which mm -hmm. was really fun. They like rented out the whole thing. And we can like play dodgeball. There was like a high jump, so it was really fun for that. Good. Um, and if I could just say something else, like yeah. about weekends, like um, I know there is a lot of weekend activities, but a big thing that um, like I do is so I live uh, in Brookline, which is about like thirty minutes away, and I like to take um, like some of the boarding students. So may, whether that be international, or domestic students um back to my house um you know hang out we like to go eat dinner um see movies do all kind of fun stuff like that so it's another way to kind of incorporate uh the school into your local community and i know i've also um had some of my chch friends meet with some of my brookline friends um and you know like expand that larger community so that's also a very great possibility to kind of connect and um you know be a part of that larger community great thank you um i just want to show um, a copy of our, our, our daily schedule because we've been getting some questions about um, what time does the day start and what time does the day end, when do activities happen and such. Um, so Matt, will you be able to share your screen and just show the weekly, the weekly And there was a question about homework. So after we walk through the schedule, we can talk about homework at night and how much you get and where you might be able to start it during the day and how study hall works and such. Um, yes, I can, I can pull it up right here. Right here. Okay, Let's see. All right, so this is a copy of our weekly, our weekly schedule. And so basically you have six classes throughout the week. So A to F block. So each letter represents a, a subject. So for example, if A was, um, you know, an algebra two class, B block could be a skills and academic support class. Um, C could be your applied physics and engineering, um, world civ one, and then um, what am I missing? You could take an, a visual and performing arts class. You could take a world language. We offer French and Spanish. So basically every subject only meets three times a week. So for example, A block uh, meets on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Okay, and so classes begin at eight o'clock on most days. This year we tried something a little bit different where we had a later start on Wednesdays. Uh, as many of you have heard, there's been some studies out there that uh, longer sleep or later starts in the morning are, are better for teenagers. Um, so we did try that this year. So C block starts um, at 9.05 instead of at eight o'clock. Our dining hall is open every day at seven o'clock. And so for lots of days, students get dropped off early because parents have to go to work. Um, so they join us for breakfast in the morning and then um, go off to class. After first period, we have something called office hours. Uh, and so that's a time where all of your teachers are available. So if you have questions on your work or you want to just go and work for that subject, all your teachers are there for you. Okay, and then you have class and then the lunch schedule is a little a little funky because you have either first lunch and then class or class then lunch depending on what building you're in. Our dining hall is not big enough to have everybody there all at once so we have two separate lunches um, and then you have a last class on Mondays, Tuesdays and Thursdays you get done at three o'clock and on Wednesdays and Fridays you get done about 2 15. We also have advisory meetings on Tuesday afternoons. We have assembly time a couple days a week and some of the students met mentioned clubs um, so there are a bunch of clubs and we can certainly talk about that a little bit more but there's also club time in the calendar however after when academics are over we want all of our students to participate in something each trimester um, so we have our performing arts program as well as a ton of different sports to choose from after school so depending on what you do the day ends probably around i would say 4 35 o'clock unless you have a game that might be a little bit later so just wanted to briefly walk you through our schedule just to kind of give you a visual about what what that looks like and then um and then study hall for our boarding students um dinner's 5 30 to 6 30 day students can stay for that and then study hall 7 30 to 9 30 
and day students can participate in that but for all boarding students it is required to go to that so um so if we want to unshare your screen matt does someone want to talk a little bit more about you know homework and expectations about how much you got and mind you a lot of our students participating most of them are going to be going into ninth grade but some are for for sophomore junior year um so for someone who's been here since freshman year do you want to talk about just kind of the homework expectations and how that is uh me and dylan have been here since freshman and we're both seniors so i mean i could start if you would like i can kind of talk about the course that i took um <laughs> So coming in um, as a freshman, uh, I was definitely like scared about high school because I have some like learning based disabilities. So like dyslexia was a big thing for me. So like reading and writing. Um, and I found that SAS, which is um, skills and academic support during my freshman and sophomore year was very crucial to kind of um, me being able to excel. So right now I'm a senior, I'm taking uh, two AP courses along with an honors language course. Um, so kind of like that was a very, um, core building block and in that SAS class you're kind of able to um it's a space where you're able to kind of work on your essays um you know structure editing um you know revising all of that great stuff um you can also do like math and other stuff in there but I really found that the SAS course was very helpful to me um especially as someone who needs that extra help with um writing um and I found that you know it kind of was a very great supplement and then for your basic English courses in your freshman year, it's um it's kind of a exploration of self. So you do a lot of uh you know you'll do some Odyssey stuff, you'll do some uh you'll do some Shakespeare. And I found that um kind of with the SAS class um tying into the freshman course, it was very easy to manage. Um, and I would say that you know you're getting about an hour to an hour and a half of homework depending on the class. Um, and depending on how diligently you worked. Um, but I also found that there's a lot of time during the day, for instance, office hours, study halls after school, lunch blocks to kind of get that work done. Um, so I found it very manageable with my freshman year um, and same with my sophomore year. Um, and then my junior year, I kind of ramped it up. I took three honors courses um, and kind of allowing myself to explore the larger um, academic side that I do have inside of me, you know, and I was really able to excel in all those courses, um, but yeah. Great, thank you. And someone from public school, do you want to talk about your transition um, coming from public school into CHCH? Yeah, so coming from public school, um, since it was much bigger, I had extremely, like, an extreme less amount of support. Um, and I kind of fell behind on my grades my freshman year. But I think coming to um, Chapel Hill, the skills and academic support program really helped me get back to a place where I was able to become independent within my schoolwork. Um, I'd say there's a lot more time during the day for me to get my work done. Even though I'm a day student, I do stay for study hall because I'm the type of learner where I learn a lot better when I'm like in a school setting. And I also find it's really helpful because a lot of the, um, the, like dorm parents are actually my teachers this year. So I find it very helpful to be able to stay after. Um, in terms of like the workload, I find that it's very manageable. Definitely being a junior, it kind of ramped up and there is like higher expectations. But I mean, there's obviously gonna be stress junior year, but I find it's very manageable because there's like tons of resources. Mm -hmm. And can someone talk about, maybe if you talked about this a little bit, Sophia, about just struggling in public school, but any way that, you know, you believe that CHCF helped you make you, yourself more confident and believe in your academic abilities, because you have so many great talents and skills, um, but in public school, you were just kind of falling behind. It's not that yeah. you weren't capable, but it was just you were overwhelmed. Can you talk a little bit about how we helped you perhaps yeah. build or improve your confidence? So I know Dylan talked a lot about becoming independent. Um, being in public school your whole life, you've kind of already learned to be independent because you don't have that sense of support every single day. Um, I think coming to Chapel Hill, the sense of support and like community and just family within the entire school, it really helped me become more comfortable within like finding out who I am as a learner instead of like trying to get perfect grades, all A's. I learned a lot more about skills for myself. I have really bad ADHD, so mm -hmm. I've learned a lot of like 
in classroom like skills um but I think just like all the support really helped me like open up to myself and really become myself like become more vulnerable to like learning about myself and just kind of trusting that like I'm a smart kid and like I can go further than like what I thought I could when I was in public school. Mm-hmm. Great. Thank you. Um, so someone want to talk like maybe the upperclassmen about kind of the more maybe like one of the most challenging or exciting classes that you've taken here and how you feel like that's really begun to prepare you for college? Uh, should I take that? I take an interesting course. Sure. Um, so I take art history, which is a course that I never thought I would have taken. Um, it's kind of a college level course. Um, the, the teacher who teaches it actually used to be a college professor. So we work out of a college textbook. Um, and you know, like, as you can tell, I'm a pretty sporty guy. I don't really like the arts that much, but, um, I really found that first off, Mr. Abrams, the teacher of the class is an amazing teacher. He's actually an artist outside of school. Um, so he was able to kind of incorporate, you know, his knowledge of art outside of school with the, um, with the class itself. And I just kind of, you know, fell in love with, you know, writing about art, learning about art. And it's just been something that's been really fantastic. Um, I've never really been, like like understood art and so kind of this class, you know, I kind of understand all about salient details, you know, kind of how to pick apart a painting, you know, and I just finished my, um, my senior capstone paper. Um, it's actually a research paper. And I found, you know, it was actually very interesting to learn about how to research art itself, but, um, but also being able to apply the skills of researching art into other things. So I'm, I'm planning to be a business major next year. So I kind of can take the skills of uh, being able to research art into, for instance, researching uh, other companies, researching, you know, marketing statistics and all that great stuff. Cool. Great. Thanks, Henry. Aaron, you've been a little quiet and Mia, do you want to join in and talk a little bit more about like one of your favorite classes you've taken here? Um, let's see. I think my favorite class far has been Spanish. Um, I kind of went in freshman year. I was I was put in Spanish one, thinking like, oh, I can't do it because like I have my like learning disabilities and all that, and like it was gonna be really hard. Um, but I learned up like ended up really loving Spanish class, and now I'm in Spanish two this year, and I like just love it every single time and every class we always do something different and like it's very it, it wants you to miss o'brien our teacher it like she the way she teaches just it like you feel like you just want to keep learning spanish so it's been really fun so far good good and aaron did you have anything to add uh yeah so i actually have quite the interesting class schedule uh this year because I have two sciences this year, and so I'm in Biochem 2 and Advanced Physics, mm-hmm. and uh, it kind of ties into the question, my most challenging class currently is yep. Advanced Physics, yep. just because it's uh, basically working out of a college textbook, mm-hmm. and so you need to use every resource available to you in order to like see yourself do really good in that class, and I really love the challenge, just because like it feels so good that when you're working on a problem and then you finally get it, and yep. it just feels amazing. <laughs> and do you feel like you were like given the foundational skills like in your previous years here to be able to feel- oh, definitely, confident? definitely. Yeah. The, uh, since I'm taking both classes uh, at the same time, my Biochem 2 class will most likely talk about like everything I need to learn in the physics class. Mm-hmm. And then I can use helpful stuff that I learned in physics to get even higher in Biochem 2. Cool. So. <laughs> good, 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 thank you. Um, and Sophia, that- Mom, that answered our, uh, that asked that question wanted me to say thank you for opening up. She really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and could one of you kind of currently going through the college counseling process? So we have Brooke Fink, who is actually going to be doing a whole live webinar on the college counseling process um, next week. So make sure you tune in for that. Um, but one of the the questions was just kind of like, how do you feel like? you know, now that you're in your junior year or someone who's in their senior year, can you talk a little bit more about the college counseling process and feeling prepared for that next step Mm -hmm. in your journey? I can talk a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm still a junior, but I've already met with Ms. Fink, I think three times. And every time I email her, she's like always so available to talking. And like, I, I don't have any older siblings, so I'm the first in my family to kind of go through the whole process. 
and it's definitely very stressful for my parents. Um, I'm looking to play D2 soccer, so I think that the whole process, it's definitely very nerve-wracking, but Miss Fink is, like, she's more than available. If I email her, she always gets back to me within, like, 20 minutes, and, like, especially with, like, this whole quarantine thing going on I think she's been like reaching out even more so mm -hmm. the whole process although it is stressful for obvious reasons it's going a lot smoother than like I thought it would mm -hmm. great thank you um, um, for me I kind of went through like that whole process already almost mm -hmm. um, but I think Miss Fink does a really good job because you start um, like the whole college process your junior year um, like the winter I think of you junior you actually start writing your um, college paper which is um, like what you'll send out to every single college when you apply and so just just that simple step of just um, being able to do that in class and being able to have a teacher check on that um, going through a whole bunch of steps to kind of finalize and make sure that this is what you want like just that one step is is a huge help because I know people who who haven't gone who haven't um, gone to Chapel Hill and and their process feels a lot, a lot more stressful. And what we do at Chapel Hill is kind of just um, help take off that stress, which is really nice um, to have. And also not only just um, in class when we do our college papers, actually during the summer, um, there's, I believe there's like two weeks where we do a college boot camp um, where Miss Fink will uh, actually kind of sit down with all, with this, it's not a, a mandatory thing, it's students who would want to go um, so she sit down in the room and then we'll kind of all fill out um, our whole entire common app page, which, which takes a long time, but it's really nice to have um, Miss Fink like physically there to help you along the way. So, yeah. Great, good. And do you know where you're going yet next year, Dylan? Uh, most likely I'm off to Roger Williams in uh, Rhode Island. Good, good, good. Well, congrats. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the next question, um, we don't have any international students joining us on the live webinar today, any current students because of the time difference. All of those students are home in their countries right now. Um, but we do have about 20% international students as part of our community. Um, I'm not sure any of the panelists or, you know, some of you live with them in the dorms, but one of the questions was, uh, or is how is life for kids coming from outside of the USA and how do they fit in? So are any of you friends with with international students and want to speak to that? Yeah, I mean, I can kind of speak to that too. Um, like, I've been boarding at Chapel Hill since I was a freshman. Um, and so at Chapel Hill, what they kind of do is they try to pair domestic students with international students. Um, and they do this to kind of create a different space, I guess. Because for me, I thought it was really cool being um, roommates with someone from a whole other country because I got to learn about like their traditions, their culture. And the same way they got to learn about my traditions, my culture, how I did things. And I always thought it was a really cool idea to kind of um, have someone from a whole another country be roommates with you. Because again, like you never really would know um, like, exactly how they do things. Like for example, over in Taiwan, um, like my roommate, my roommate, my sophomore year was from Taiwan and I got to learn all about his traditions, what he does there. I even got to eat some of his food and snacks from there as well. So it was really cool. Um, but yeah, like I, from from kids who come in from other countries, I think that they they definitely, it's definitely, I feel like it's easy for them to um, kind of adjust, especially when, especially in the boarding community, because we're all so, so open and so welcoming. Um, and I have a lot of friends who are, who come internationally and like, I'm really, I'm really happy that I was able to meet them here too. And just kind of, especially, you know, coming from some other schools and having um, here at CHCH students from around the world in your classes, can someone else speak to just kind of how that has impacted your, your conversations in class or brought more um, like different perspectives to that? Can anyone speak to that? And how that's kind of changed your perspective, maybe coming from, from a public school and coming to such a diverse community? I mean, my being from Wayland, it's a predominantly white town and school, obviously. And I think coming to such a diverse school where there's actually like students from different continents inside your classes, I think it's really eye-opening to see like so much different culture, yet like we're all so similar, like we all, kind of I mean like 
everyone's fitting in everyone's here for the same reason like we want to get educated we want like good opportunities we want lifelong friends and I think it's really cool to see so many different like people all different colors like all different backgrounds like coming together to mm -hmm. form, like one huge family good thank you um we talked about the arts a little bit but um does someone want to talk about just you know one of the questions was like your teachers are also your coaches and and sometimes your dorm parents and kind of there's a lot of connections there and that's kind of one of the biggest i think perks about just coming to a school like ours is that you you have to participate in something after school but the point of that is that you work so hard during the day on your academics and just really doing something that you love or being able to try something new um does someone want to kind of speak to one of you know a connection maybe that they've made with a faculty member that you know maybe you wouldn't have made if they weren't your coach or they were just maybe your teacher yeah um i can talk a little bit about that Great, so you. right now um i'm really close to a lot of the teachers especially because i've been born here since my freshman year and i am a junior but um one i feel like relationship that's particularly strong with me um is a teacher called miss mcdonald's so she um is my basketball coach as well as my softball coach so um something great about being here is that you always have you know that um higher someone's higher than you and they can kind of like give you advice because you know they've been to high school before and just them always being there for you whether it be emotionally or academically so that's very helpful for me um and they've like always been there for me because I also took a class with her last year um, for sophomore year she teaches English so um, also her she lives here so mm -hmm. I kind of see her like every day so yeah. it's really nice. Nice thanks for sharing and me I saw you kind of smiling a little, little bit too mm -hmm. do you have a short story to share? Um, yeah Miss McDonald's she is my English teacher for sophomore and I was on the varsity basketball team last year as a freshman and she really made it easy for me to fit in and like like kind of communicate better with the older girls mm -hmm. and it was just she made basketball really fun which yeah. as a player you always want to have that part in a sport even mm -hmm. if you're not like really good at it or stuff like that so yeah Good. And then you had her for a teacher the next year, so that probably made that transition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and I know we've had a ton of championships the past couple of years. I think we've had 13 championships over the past few years. Um, does someone want to kind of speak to that and kind of, you know, just being an athlete? I mean, we have students who have never played a sport before and are able to participate. And we'll have an athletics webinar um, next week. But does someone want to kind of speak about maybe, you know, being athletically talented and being able to continue to be challenged here in the athletics? Yeah, um, I want to talk a little bit about that because um, for me, before I came here, I actually played volleyball since about fifth grade. Mm -hmm. So um, coming in, I was able to join varsity volleyball right away. Mm -hmm. And um, at first, it wasn't as like challenging as I thought it would be because like I thought high school would be like this big, great thing. But um, it's still like really fun to be able to be with your teammates all the time and to like learn new skills because there were a few skills that I was kind of rusty on that um, my coach was able to help me with because he's also um, a coach for boys volleyball so he knows a lot about it um, and I also actually started basketball and softball when I came to the school mm -hmm. so um, balancing like learning the sport and like being able to play in the games and kind of like getting better throughout the years has really helped me mm -hmm. um, all of the sports that I've been we've won championships with so just being able to see how your teammates around you like grow as athletes is really fun to see great and then um, we do have other options other than athletics for after school in the co-curricular program um, so you could do performing arts but there are some other options Aaron have you you've participated in some of the other non-athletic options uh, yes. Yeah. Do you want to talk yes. about that? So uh, every winter I do Makerspace. And so <laughs> Makerspace is essentially just robotics, but mm -hmm. you can also do whatever you want in the Makerspace class. So I have my friend uh, Lucy. Lucy did sewing for the entire time. Mm -hmm. My friend Jonas did a bunch of art. Mm -hmm. Last year I made drones and this year I made a uh, submersible vehicle. Cool. And uh, yeah, that's Makerspace. <laughs> yeah, so there are um, some other options other than athletics. So make sure you tune in um, 
to the arts um, option as well next week so we can talk a little bit more about the arts offerings after school and um, and things like that. But don't worry, if you're not an athlete, you don't have to play sport. But if you've never tried one, you can absolutely try and, and you know do cross country, for example, or something a little less intimidating. So there's a space for everybody um, on campus. So this is a fun question. So what is one thing you wouldn't change about the school and what is one thing you'd like to change about the school? So you can be honest. I made sure uh, Dr. Conrad was not participating so you, all the <laughs> students can make sure they feel comfortable answering the questions. So one thing you would not change and one thing you would change. I think for me, I wouldn't change like all of, I wouldn't change the schedule. I find that the schedule is really helpful and that we get a break essentially between every single class. Mm -hmm. which is nice, but something I would change is the required after school activities every trimester because I know I'm, I can't speak for the borders but at least for a day student it is a lot commuting mm -hmm. home after like 5 30 practices because like I did basketball and sometimes it would be ending at 7 45 and mm -hmm. then I would be getting home at like 8 30. Yep. It's, it's just tiring but yeah. Yeah. it's fun still. Good. All right anyone else? Um, I would say, uh, uh, I'd say for me, something that I would change, uh, but also keep is um, is the size of our community. Um, sometimes I feel like our community uh, is not that not that it's a bad thing that's too small. Um, I'll get to that after, but sometimes I would like to kind of expand outside of our community. Um, mm -hmm just to see new people. Um, but at the same time, like for me, it's a really good thing having like such a small community. To, mm -hmm. I've, and since being a boarding student, um, that really is my second home. Um, so it's really nice to kind of be able to uh, know everybody by name and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, and also we have like babies and dogs on campus. So it's really like a family, um, really like a family vibe at, at CHCH. Um, but again, like sometimes it would be nice to have like more people on campus since we are a pretty small school. So mm -hmm. Other than that, nothing really. Yep. Good. Anyone else, or not everyone has to answer. <laughs> yeah, I can. I can go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the one thing that I would not change is the teachers and the people here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I really like them a lot. And uh, from, from experience uh, myself, I know that none of these teachers are gonna let you fail. No matter how bad you're doing in a class, they're always trying to help you. Uh, you can go to an office hours. Uh, <laughs> you can go to an office hours. I remember uh, Mr. G, I was doing really bad in advanced physics in the beginning of the year. And I went to his office hours and he sat down with me for the entire office hours and only did everything uh, the way it was supposed to be done. And it was so amazing because I learned everything in that mm -hmm. like 45 minutes. It was awesome. But the one thing that I would change is uh, like Sophia, the after school activities, mm -hmm. just because uh, I'm getting a little older and I need money. So, <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> I'd like to, you know, like go out and get a job somehow. So yep. that's, that's it. Yeah, cool. And, um, does anyone want to talk about like a favorite memory that you've made? My favorite memory was my first year. I kind of came to the school kind of like a bit standoffish, kind of just wanting to get through high school because like I had to leave all my friends from public school. But being on the soccer team, although we didn't win every single game, it was definitely really fun. And I remember we lost our, our semifinal game in like the league. Um, but the game was just like, it was like my favorite memory. Cause like, regardless of if we won or lost, like we did really good and like we played really hard and like everybody was just like, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, for me, um, I feel like one of my favorite memories here at Chapel Hill was freshman year when I had one of my dorm bondings. So every year in Harrington Hall, we have this tradition where we kind of sleep over in the learning commons or in the chapel, which is where we have like all of our assemblies and stuff like that and our um, languages, language classes. And we had like this big karaoke, which was like, you kind of saw a snippet of that in the little video, but 
Mm -hmm. um, it was really fun because um, I kind of was able to open up and like be myself and like see everyone. And um, like we had a lot of snacks and it was just really fun. Cool. I, I, I can speak quiet. a little bit. Oh, okay. I was going to say, oh, sorry. You go, no, you can go ahead and read first and then I'm going to put Andy on the spot. <laughs> sure. Um, I just saw that there was a comment about uh, like making friends. Mm -hmm. um, and one of my favorite, most favorite memories ever was um, coming in as a freshman. Uh, we have registration and then you go to your practices after that. Um, and I signed up for cross country, obviously, um, it's a fall sport. So, um, one of my favorite, most fond memories was, uh, we had like a little team bonding thing. Um, and I, I, I knew absolutely no one at the time and, uh, you know, just running around with the cross country team. I think we played capture the flag. Um, and I instantly bonded with like five or six other students there. And, um, you know, that is one of my favorite memories, just being, um, in the cross country field, um, with my teammates, you know, and, some of those teammates that uh, I made friends with, um, you know, I still talk with to, to this day. Um, mm -hmm. And they're still some of my best friends. So that was one of my favorite um, memories and uh, ways that I met friends. Great. Uh, do you have anything to add? Um, <laughs> no, not really. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. How about Mia? Um, probably a good memory is definitely like the sport in, in just seeing how intense everybody can get and serious during the games and like how all the effort paid off in the end and mm -hmm. we ended up winning a lot of the times. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And cool. just seeing people who've never played the sport before mm -hmm. um, end up like getting like three goals in the season. It's just crazy how fast they learned. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're just coming up on 4.30. Uh, if you have any questions that we did not cover, please feel free uh, to send me an email. And I'm sure any of these students would be happy to chat with you as well um, through social media or email or whatever, however teenagers communicate these days. Um, but you can feel free. I'm going to put my email in the chat box um, for you. Oh, I think Chargy wants to say goodbye as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but feel free to reach out and then I can put you in touch with any of these students or if you have any other questions I'm happy to answer those as well but I just want to give a round of applause to our student panelists for taking time out of their day to, to join us and just share about their experiences at CHCH so I appreciate you all doing that and um, yeah all right Chargy are you there oh Chargy thank you thank you Chargy <laughs> Bye, Thank you. Love you. Thanks, Chargy. Thank you, Chargy. <laughs> Soon. All right. So we will definitely uh, make sure you tune in Thank next you. week. Um, I'm sorry, the rest of this week. So Wednesday, we have our skills and academic support webinar. Um, Friday, we have our parent panel. And students and parents are more than welcome uh, to join us for the parent panel as well, um, if you have any questions for them, so parents and students. And then next week, we're going to finish up um, with our visual and performing arts program, one on college counseling, and then athletics at CHCH. So make sure you tune in. And if for some reason you can't make it, again, we'll send all these recordings out and have them available on our website. So goodbye for today, and hopefully we'll see you on Wednesday, and hope, hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you.